Now, a couple of days ago, I put a tweet out asking what plugin for WordPress couldn't you live without? For me, it was WP Reset. So this is a plugin that I've come across recently. And if you'd like to learn more about that, let me know in the comment section and I'll take a look at creating a video on how to use it. But all the usual kind of things came back, things like backup plugins and you know SEO plugins, things like that. But one that popped up that I'd never heard of that kind of piqued my interest was Uncanny Automator. Now I didn't know what this was, so I took a little bit of a, a little bit of a scurry around on the internet to find out more about it. And basically what it is is Zapier for WordPress. Now, if you've never come across Zapier or you don't know what it does, it basically allows you to trigger actions. So in other words, you'd have a trigger, something would happen, and then an action, something would be carried out. So a really simple example with Uncanny Automator is you could have someone purchases a digital product and then you may have Learn Dash that has lessons and courses for the different kinds of products you sell. You may want to automatically enroll them on the related Learn Dash course. Well, Uncanny Automator could do that. So you can have as simple as you want. You can have one trigger, one action, or you could have multiple triggers and multiple actions. You can get as complex as you want to. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna give you a demonstration of the free version, but if you'd like to see the pro version in action, let me know and I'll contact the developers and see if I can get hold of a full copy and take a look at creating some content on how to use the pro version. But take a look at the video and let me know in the comment section if this is something you'd like to see more information on. Well, let's just jump over now and take a look at Uncanny Automator. So let's kick off by taking a quick look at the Uncanny Automator website to get an idea of what's going to happen. If we scroll down, we can see there are basically three different stages. You've got the trigger, which you can choose to set up. You can choose the action when that trigger is actually triggered, and then you can let the Uncanny Automator carry out the action that you want. So if we scroll down, we can see that it works with a lot of popular different plugins for WordPress, things like BBPress, BuddyPress, and so on. And there are tons of options. It'll link through things like WooCommerce, LearnDash, lots of really useful ways of working with it. And as it says, it's built for novices. And to be honest, I've literally played with this for no more than 10 minutes. And they're right, I've never used it before. And it's incredibly easy to set up your first sort of trigger and action. So you can see we've got lots of different kinds of triggers. We can think, do things like when a user buys a product, views a product, registers for an event and so on. And then we can have different actions. Now the nice thing is we can have multiple actions. So you could have a series of actions that are carried out, all very simple, all done in a visual fashion. So let's take a look at the actual dashboard itself and see the kinds of things that we have available to us, even just inside the free version, which is what I'm gonna be taking a look at today. Now, even though we're only gonna take a look at the free version, if you're interested and you'd like to see more, let me know in the comment section below and I'll see if I can get a copy from the developer so we can take a look at the pro version and see if it's worth investing your money and your time into. But I can say from the get go from just quick sort of 10 minutes worth of testing, it is incredibly easy and I can already see a ton of possibilities for why this could be really useful if you're selling things online through WooCommerce, you have online courses and you want to carry out a stream of actions, super cool. So I've already created an action. You can see we've got an action, which is our trigger, and then we've got everything set up inside there. I'll delete that, though, so we can take a look at creating the whole thing from scratch. So what we're going to do is we're going to create something really simple because I've got WooCommerce installed, and we'll just set up our basic recipe. So let's add a new recipe in. Now, this is broken down, and this is really all there is to this free version. You've got the logged in triggers. So in other words, do you want to trigger a WooCommerce or a WordPress-based action? Do you want to, that's going to be your trigger. Now we can stack these again, so we don't have to have one action. You can have multiple actions have to be approved before they will go through and actually do the action itself. So let's just say we want to use WooCommerce. Once we do that, we can search now for a range of different triggers. Now we are kind of limited in this because like I say, this is the free version just to allow you to get a taster. But for a lot of people, this will be more than enough. This will do exactly what you want it to do. So you can see we've got options for user purchases a product or user views a product. There are some other ones, but these are unfortunately restricted to the pro version. So for this, we're going to keep it really simple and say a user views a product. We can then choose the second set of things to happen to make sure that all these are met and we don't just sort of fire off different actions all over the place and cause problems. By default, everything is set to be in draft mode. So we have to go through each stage, activate it, and then actually activate the action itself. So we're saying a viewer or a user views a product one time, and the product is set to be Flying Ninja, which is just a product, a sample product. We're going to set this to be 
two times because we obviously don't want to fire this off when someone lands on that product and we'll say save. So now we've set up our first thing, which is the trigger. If we want to add another trigger in, we can add that in and you can see we could do a game, same again. You know, we can have a WooCommerce or a WordPress based trigger. So we've got things like a user logs into the site, a user submits a comment on a post, etc, etc, etc. So let's just cancel that and we'll just keep it to one simple option. And it comes in now, the most important thing here is this is a logged in trigger. The user has to be logged in for this to actually happen. So to come down, we're going to say, once that trigger is met, we want to have an action run. So we're going to say, click on an action. And we've got two options, WordPress and we've got Zapier. Now, obviously, if you're using Zapier, you can have more complex actions, even more complex than what this plugin can do. But for now, we're going to keep this and stick to the WordPress options. We're going to click on WordPress and you can see we've got some options. Again, we've got pro versions so we can see the kinds of things you can do. Unfortunately, we can't do them yet. So we've got things like add a new role, change the user's role, send an email, or send data to a webhook. For this example, we're going to say we want to send an email. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if this user has gone back a couple of times to the same product, they may well be interested in it. So let's send them an email and incentivize actually getting them to purchase that. Now, like I say, this is a really simple example. You want to set up some other conditions to make sure they don't purchase it and get this email come through to them. But, you know, this should give you an idea of how you can build these conditions and these actions and triggers and all those kinds of things up. So let's take a look. Send an email to user email. That's perfectly fine. We want to use the email that they're logged in with, so we can stick to that. But we do have options on the right-hand side that allows us to set search for different kinds of tokens. So you can see for the from, its default is the admin email. But we can if we want to search for common, and we've got things like user email and admin email. So we leave that as it is. Everything else is perfectly fine on there. Subject, which we need to put in. We're just going to put in... I think you liked this product. Okay, so then we've got the body we can drop in there. So we can say, you looked at, and let's use one of those little hooks. So let's click on there, or tokens I should say. And we're gonna say, we've got common, we've got advanced, but what we want is a user views product two times. Let's expand that out. And then we can choose from some of the options that are available as a product. So we're gonna say product title. So that will drop in the short code that's going to use to display that when this email is sent. Now, if we want to, we could easily make that a link. Let's just grab another token. So we're going to just drop that down and say the product URL. And then all we're going to do is just copy this. Or we'll just cut that from there, I should say. We'll highlight this little block of short code, drop in a link. We'll paste that in there and we'll just make sure that it doesn't put anything else at the beginning. So we'll apply that. Now, you may need to get rid of the HTTP that it automatically puts in because that's already going to be used inside this short code. So apply that to everything is looking the way we need it to. So what we could do then is we can add another action if we wanted to. So we could send them an email and we could also do something like add them to a mailing list if we wanted to. Obviously, I don't recommend that without GDPR consent, but you know, you can do these things if you want to. And then you could redirect to a different location once the recipe is completed. Be careful doing this if you're doing something that's an action that's triggered without any kind of user interaction, because the last thing you want to do is for them to take a look at a product a second time and then suddenly get redirected to somewhere else for no particular reason because you fired off this recipe. But if you wanted to, you can enable that and then you can just choose where that gets redirected to. We'll uncheck that because we don't want to use it. So now we've created our first recipe. Let's just give this a title and we're just going to call this send email ninja. Okay, so we've done that. We can categorize these if we want to. We can add tags to them. We can organize these things in any way you want. So as you can see now, everything is still in draft status. So we can enable that. We can see we can't enable it on this section. We need to enable each of the different stages. So that will go through. It'll check to see if something works. You can see it says a user views a product and we can't switch this over. So we need to save that. So there's lots of little things in there to make sure that you don't accidentally miss parts out, which could be super frustrating. So we'll make that section live so everything is perfectly fine in there. We'll check this one and you can see it says user email. Let's just take a look. Let's open that up and we can just make sure that everything is as it should be.
Looks like I just need to quickly hit save to make sure that all those things are saved. Everything is now blue. We can enable this. So those two sections are now live. So we can now take the recipe out of draft status. And there we go. That's been done. Now, there's no save button on here once you've done this. Just going through each of the different the triggers and the actions and so on, making sure you save them there. That saves the whole process for you. So with that done, we're now ready to give this a try. So while we're on the test site, and we're going to come into the poster section, which is where I know that particular product is. There's our Flyer Ninja. We'll click on there. And because we only look at it one time, nothing will actually happen. So let's just go and take a look. The online store. We'll come back. We'll go and take a look at the posters again. And oh, I really like this Flyer Ninja. Let's click on that one again. Okay, so my experience is exactly the same. Now I'll just carry on viewing the site, blah, 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 blah. But in the background, when I come to the second time, an email has automatically been fired off to the email address that I've got when I'm logged in. So I'll have an email waiting for me. And if we open up my email software, we can see there's the email that's come in. You can see you looked at, I think you like this product. We can click and we can go straight over to that product on the site. So we could, if we wanted to then carry on and purchase it. So it's a really simple example, but what it should do is just show you the kind of thing that this particular plugin is going to offer us this is just really scratching the surface of what you could do, and I'm only showing you inside WooCommerce, but there are tons and tons of integrations. And the Pro version opens up even more options. So Uncanny Automator really does open up a ton of possibilities on how you could integrate various different plugins into various different actions. And if you want to get really deep into it, you could be using various different triggers and then sending that over to Zapier to have even more things go on. But I think it's got a lot of kind of interesting things about it. I think it's got a lot of potential. But as always, let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to see a full deep dive video into the pro version of Uncanny Automator. As always, all of the applicable links for this and everything else I cover on the channel are all in the description below. My name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.